Hi, this is Linda from Hoop Sisters, and today we're going to show you how to do the insert and the blocks from C5, 6, and D5, and D6. Here's a look at the entire section that those particular blocks in. They stitch out very quickly, and they're very fun to do. Today we're going to be working on block C5, C6, D5, and D6. And before we start on the block, we need to make the insert. So this is what the finished block looks like. The insert is right here. And it has two different fabrics, one on the front and one on the back. So you will need a square of your backing fabric for your insert. It's fabric two and then a square, a larger square of your top fabric, which the stitching will be done on. You will hoop this top fabric so it needs to be large enough to fit in your hoop. So uh, we didn't give you dimensions for it because it's going to depend on your hoop size. So we're going to go ahead and hoop this fabric up. Then we're going to take it to the machine and we'll use the editing uh, features to put two files together. So we'll go and do that and be right back. So I'm going to use my editing function on my sewing machine screen. I'll select my insert, go to my editing screen. I will copy the insert and I will mirror it so it flips the other direction. And I'll move one to the right and I'll move the second one to the left. So now I can go ahead and combine the colors. So when I'm ready to sew it, it'll sew each color one time and I can get two done in one hooping. So fabric eight is hooped up and ready to go. I'm going to place thread A in my needle and stitch the top of my inserts. So hopefully you can see the stitching from step one and for step two we will take fabric two and place it right side down over the stitching from step one and the machine will stitch the seam for the inserts. So here's our completed insert step, still in the hoop, so you can see the fabrics were right sides together. So all we have to do is pop it out and grab, I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm just going to trim a quarter inch seam allowance. Just put my ruler on the quarter inch on the quarter inch on the ruler and so I have a quarter inch seam allowance. And on the bottom, I'll trim it just a little bit longer than where the stitching ends. And on the very tip, we're going to trim it off to about less than an eighth of a sixteenth of an inch or so from the tip without cutting the stitching. And this is important at this tip area here because we're going to turn this and press it. We're going to trim that nice and tight. That way when we turn it, it'll be nice and smooth in that tip area. So I will turn this right side out, poke out the tip, and I'll press it and my insert will be ready to go. So I just finished my inserts. I've got them all turned and pressed and they're ready to go. So now it's time to go ahead and start stitching block C5, C6, D5, and D6. Um, they're all the same, they're just rotated in different directions in your hoop in case you want to match your large scale prints. So the fabrics you will need will be fabric three. You'll need two, you're, you're supposed to cut two squares and cut them in half diagonally so you have two different size triangles of fabric three You'll need two rectangles of fabric five, a square of fabric six, your backing fabric for your particular block. Today we will be stitching block C6. 
your optional wool which I've gone ahead and stitched onto my battleizer. So we're ready to go ahead and so this is step one and two. We're ready for step three. Step three, we're going to go ahead and stitch the placement stitches on top of either your battleizer or your wool. So what you'll do if you're using wool, you want to go into your machine where you can set your presser foot at its very highest level. So it'll go over the wool easier. And then I have a little stylist. So I'm going to go ahead and start the machine. And I'm just going to make sure it, I don't get my foot caught in the wall. Especially when it goes this direction. Just keeping the wool down and out of the foot's way. So now that that step is done, I can go ahead and go back into my machine and put my setting back at my normal setting for the embroidery. Step four, we're going to continue with the water soluble thread and we will place fabric five in this area right here. So I'll take my, my longer edge and I'll put it about a quarter of an inch past that stitching line and put it under the machine and let it tack it down. Step five is next, and we will switch to a neutral thread, not your water-soluble thread, and we will place fabric six right side down over fabric five. We'll put our raw edges even, and the machine will stitch a seam. You might want to check to be sure that when you flip it over, it totally covers this middle section right here. Here's my step five, where I seamed uh, fabric 6 to fabric 5. So for step 6 we flip it right side up and smooth it out and we continue with the neutral thread and let it tack down the center section of this block. So here's my tack down section. So now I'm going to go ahead and trim a quarter inch around this whole thing because it's all inside the block and we'll come back and do step 7. So we're going to go ahead and switch back to water soluble thread in our needle only. And step seven is to take fabric three, the smaller piece of fabric three, and place it in the corner. And you're going to leave a half an inch on the outside edge and you'll let the machine tack it down. So you can see I went ahead and trimmed my fabric very close because this will be an applique later. So for step number eight, we're going to take our second piece of fabric five and it goes in this corner. This corner is a stitch and flip, not an applique. So I'll show you a little trick in getting your angle. I like to set it like this so I have a nice square corner here. And I'll turn back this fabric, line it up with my stitching line, and give it a finger press, which gives me my angle. So then I'll take a pair of scissors, and right where that pressing is, I'm going to trim it. I'm going to leave about 3 eighths of an inch extra. I like to give myself a little bit extra room. So I now have my angle for my seam. So I can just place it where, I, where it needs to go, flip it right sides together, and line up my raw edges, and let the machine stitch the seam and don't forget to change to your neutral thread. So here's my seam. I don't know if you could see the press mark I made here, but there's where it actually stitched. And when I flip it right side up and smooth it out, I've got a nice perfect corner. So the next step is step nine. We'll place water soluble thread back in the needle. It'll tack down this corner and it'll stitch a placement line through the center of your block. So there's my tack down. I'm going to go ahead and trim this excess fabric off right here. And next step 10 is to place thread C in the needle only and the machine will do some decorative stitching. 
just finished stitching step 10 with all of our decorative stitching. So for step 11, it's time to place our insert. Our insert will go right here. So I took a small piece, not it's not too small, piece of Wonder Tape, put it on the back of the insert, peel it off, and then I like to fold it right where that stitching line is. Fold it right in half, and then I can line up the fold with the placement line done by the water soluble thread earlier. So I'll try to center that the best I can, stick it down, and what we're looking for is right here on the ends, I may have to adjust it, I want to make sure that this stitching is past this plate tack down stitch here so that when I do the seam later it'll be totally encased. So then we'll take our larger triangle of fabric 3 after you place your insert correctly you'll lay it right side down with all the raw edges this raw edge and this raw edge even. This is sticking out but I can trim that later. I'll put a neutral thread in the machine and we'll let the machine stitch the seam. So I just stitched my seam. Now I'm going to come back and trim off this extra fabric to get it about the same length as this. Our next step is step 12 and we'll flip our fabric right side up, smooth it out, put water soluble thread in the needle and let it tack it down. Step 13 is to put thread A in the needle only and the machine will stitch some decorative stitches. Time for step 14 where we're going to turn the hoop over and put the back on and don't forget to change to your water soluble thread. We're ready for step 15. We need to pull our insert back and put a pin in it to keep it out of the way. We'll place thread A in the needle and the bobbin. Um, turn off your automatic thread cutter if you haven't done so already and the machine will do a satin stitch over the raw edge and finish the quilting in this area. Just completed step 15. For step 16 we're going to flip this little insert back over. Make sure it's centered over the placement line stitched previously. So now I'm, I'm just looking at the point right now. Then we'll place thread D in the needle in the bobbin and the machine will stitch a decorative stitch right over the top of the insert. You can also choose to use a stitch on your sewing machine and stitch it manually with your embroidery machine and, and sew right through the whole block right here. Step 17, we'll stitch a decorative stitch right over this area. You're going to use thread C in the needle in the bobbin and go ahead and stitch the decorative stitch. Final step in this block is to place thread B in the needle in the bobbin and the machine will do some quilting in uh, some of the areas, just some straight line quilting. So my block is complete and we're ready to go ahead and trim it. So here's my completed block. We're ready to trim it. This block is in the middle of the quilt, so there's no binding on any of the edges. So we're going to use the trimmer by George with the metal edge on all four edges of this block. And to use it, you turn back the front facing of your block, take the metal edge, and I like to say shimmy it up to your basting line. Lay your trimmer down. Make sure you've got no fabric exposed in the metal edge and then take your 60 millimeter rotary cutter and trim off your battleizer and your backing. And you will do this on all four sides. And this will take away all the bulk when you sew your seam together later. So now we have the back, the backing and the battleizer trimmed away. So now we turn the trimmer by George over and we place the quarter inch on the ruler with the basting line 
on the edge of the black and we go around all four sides and trim off the top. So this is actually block C6, but you will do the same thing on block C5, C6, D5, and D6. So there's my completed block.